the righteous souls of bliss, of, of, of goodness, that they visit one another and discuss what happened in the world as freely and as fluidly, in fact, more so than they would in this world. And he says that every soul in the barzakh keeps the company of those that they love and those that were like them. You know, when the Prophet ﷺ talked about the souls before we got to the short world, he said, Al-arwah junudun mujannad, that the souls were like conscripted soldiers in the realm of souls, right? So those that had an affinity to one another there, they have a natural affinity to one another here. And those that have a natural aversion to one another there, they have a natural aversion to one another here as well. And what that's referring to is that in the realm of souls, where we didn't have these bodily dimensions, right? The righteous souls were together, the wicked souls were together, right? And so the souls interacted with one another in that in that iteration of Alam al-Arwah, in that iteration of the realm of souls, without the limitations of this world. So you might find someone that is just like you, or you might not find them, but they're there, right? They have the same attitude as you, they might even look like you, they have your same characteristics, they have your same priorities, very similar level of faith or whatever it may be, but you're limited in, in distance and things of that sort. But when it comes to Alam al-Arwah and the second iteration of Alam al-Arwah, which is Barzakh, the, the realm of souls, which is that next realm of Barzakh, those restrictions are not like the restrictions in this life. And so, Anta ma'man ahbabt, you are with those who you love that you could have been with in this physical realm. And you are with those that you love that you never even got to meet. You are with the people that you love and the arwah al-mu'mineen, the believing souls gather with one another. And that's why our greatest hope when we think of the righteous that passed before us and we, we hope that they are amongst the righteous, our immediate loved ones, that they're amongst those souls that receive us. Now, is this established in any clear-cut hadith? In fact, multiple hadith. And that is, you know, a hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions the soul first and foremost ascending the gates, the illiyin. Remember, it has to go get registered with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a righteous soul. And the angels are passing through the heavens, passing the soul from gate to gate. And the angels say, مَا أَطْيَبَ هَذِهِ الْرِيحِ أَلَّتِي جَاءَتْكُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ What a beautiful smell that has come from the earth. And so when the righteous soul is ascending through the heavens, the angels comment on the beautiful smell. What a beautiful smell that has come from the earth. And then that person settles their new home, the grave. After you have been dressed, after you have been given your expanse, after you've been given your light, after you've been given your window into Jannah, guess what? Now the visitors are to come. Prophet ﷺ says that the souls of the believers start to gather upon that person. They start to come to visit that person, to receive that person. And they are more delighted to see you than one of you when you receive your long lost love. That's how the souls of the believers are. And so the ones that you missed, the ones that you never even met, they're all coming upon you. They're receiving you. You're seeing those people that you used to see in the